This for the middleweight title. It is Todd Whitney against Jerry Nelson. Some thoughts about Todd Whitney. Okay, Todd Whitney is in, in on the left of our screen in the white muscle shirt. He's a young fella. He's only 21 years old. He, he's got a sponsor from Puget Sound. He holds a couple of titles. He's a state champion in Washington, and he's come second in the Pacific Northwest. So he's a tough competitor as well. We talk about this being a Can-Am championship, Canadian against an American. Right, and we have two Americans here in the final. They're both in the top row position, but you can see that Jerry Nelson on the right of your screen has the hand position. His fingers are on top of Todd's, which means that's an advantage position. And he can and he he can rest there more than Todd can. So it wouldn't be it wouldn't be much to Todd's disadvantage to get out of this thing and maybe take a foul and then move on again. That's true. There's your winner. And just as he was thinking of maybe pulling out, that's when Jerry decided to unload on him. Sometimes you can catch your opponent off guard. We talk so much about the physical aspect of the sport because it is such a physical game. It takes bronze strength against bronze strength, but there's also quite a, quite a mental aspect, mental toughness, also strategy, this kind of thing. That's right. It's, it's not unlike any other sport. If you want to be a champion at it and a champion at arm wrestling, you have to be an all-round competitor. You have to be an athlete. You have to be in shape. You have to have endurance. You have to have a good mind. And, and especially with the Canadian Arm Wrestling Association, we have drug testing. All the winners today will be drug tested for any substance, and we don't allow any steroids or anything used here. Now this for the heavyweight champion, Doug Rue against, once again, Jerry Nelson. Now I like Doug Rue, he's a quiet competitor. He just gets up there and does his thing. Now this is where, this is where all the competing that Jerry Nelson has done could hurt him a lot. Yes, exactly. Doug has endurance. There it is. Doug Rue, you got to feel pretty good about Doug Rue winning this thing. You sure do. He's a Canadian, I have to feel good about that. <laughs> Doug Rue is also one of the nicer guys that you're going to run into in this sport. What do you take out of the sport? What's the fun? What's the kick? Hey, uh, winning's the basic thing, eh? But meeting all the new people, man, that's great action. Uh, we travel f uh, to uh, Alberta and, uh, and to across Canada, and you see the same people, and, and they're a great bunch of people to, to um, talk to and to uh, arm wrestle. They're just a great bunch, yeah. Now, let's get on to the big kids. Super heavyweight. Okay, we're going with Mike Kadar, and we're going with Mark Shannon. Mark Shannon's up there at the table. He's waiting for Mike right now. Mark is a champion. He's won a world title. He's got Canadian title, a lot of Alberta titles, and he's going to have a tough match here, but he's a real gritty performer. He doesn't give up. Again, these are two, two of the kind of guys you expect to see in a final of a super, of a super heavyweight championship. That's right. We picked Mark, Ch Mark Shannon to be in the finals here. He, he, he arm wrestles funny. He gets into what we call a break wrist position, but he, he uses his tricep. He pulls his shoulder in, and even though he's in a break wrist position, he's able to put a lot of pressure on his opponent's arm. You know, the other thing, too, that is fascinating about the sport, the way it is growing in leaps and bounds, is the way that the crowd gets into it. You can, you know, they've got music going, the crowd is yelling and screaming all the time. This is really uh, a fan sport as much as it's a competitive sport. Yeah, it's a real good fan sport because most of the people here, are, a lot of them are friends, they know who they are, or they're a Canadian or American, so they're, they're, they can root for their team as well as the individuals. Mike Kadar has the hand position here, holding on with everything he's got, but we don't count Mark out. We're going to have a slip out here, It I looks think. that way, yes. That's so, the referee's discretion. They, nobody tried to slip. It's just the way they got their hand position. While they're doing this and putting the strap on, let's talk a little bit about the conditioning that these athletes go through to prepare for a championship of this magnitude. Okay, and most of these guys that you see it, that we're watching here in the finals, they all train. They weight train or they jog. They work out in some way or another, or they have a job that's very strenuous. 
the best training there is for arm wrestling is arm wrestling. So a lot of these guys are arm wrestling at least once, twice, three times a week with guys of their own caliber or better in order to get good at the sport. All right, again, this is for the Super Heavyweight Championship. Mark Shannon and Mike Kadar. Okay, we're just waiting for the straps to be put on here. And these are big guys, both over 200 pounds. Now, this is going to be to Mark Shannon's advantage. Mark on the right of the screen and in the longer hair. Because of the way he arm wrestles in the break wrist position, this is going to be an advantage to him because he, he can let his wrist flop over, but he won't slip out. But in, in straight strength, one-on-one, -on -one, who has the advantage? I'd say there's no advantage here. This is going to take technique or endurance. I think this is going to be an endurance match. A fella that can just hang in there the longest and wants to win. The way this thing has been set up, it could be one of the best matches that we'll see all day. This will be a long one. This will be a good one. That's exactly what you said it was going to be. is opening up his arms coming apart but he's losing strength when that happens and that's it mark hangs in there with endurance to win that match so mark shannon wins the super heavyweight championship and this allows us to move into the left-handers now this is this is a rematch that that i've been waiting all day to see this is a good setup this one here because these are two individuals who really really don't like each other very much maybe you can explain a little bit about the middle uh the left middle uh, championship and uh the players that are involved here okay greg to pull in the gray t-shirt on the left there he's our canadian and uh, he's pulling Clyde Long Young from the United States. Now these fellas have never pulled each other before. This is their first time that they've pulled together. Now watch, watch Clyde Young. This is the master of the psych as far as I, I can see. He along with Jerry Nelson, who's a Canadian, are the two best that we've seen in this championship so far as psyching their opponent. I agree. He does it only, I, I would say Clyde does it in a quieter sort of way, but he, <laughs> he really goes at psyching the opponent out. I spoke to, uh, to Greg earlier, and he mentioned to me that he's going to try something a little different in the final against Clyde this time. So let's watch for it. So he thinks he's found a weak spot in Clyde. Again, the quickness of Clyde Young comes into play. Clyde got him. He got the hand on top. Now you see Clyde Young was coming out of the B side, so he has to beat Greg Capola twice in order to win the championship. So we're going to see them up there again. But after a match such as that, if there is a psychological advantage, it has to go to Clyde Young. He's got to be feeling as if he can't lose this thing right now. I think that's the way he'd be thinking now, yeah. He, I think he's got Greg figured out. Now let's move on to the heavyweights, the lefties. Mike Adar, Les Spooner. Now, uh, met in the, in the semifinal. Yeah. Okay, we've got Mike. We've got Mike Kidar up there on the right in the white t-shirt, and we've got Ian Leslie on the left. The way we've got our table set up today, we've, we see Canada on the white side always, and the United States on the blue side. We've had a lot of slip-out matches today, and we just had another one. This is our first opportunity to take a look at Ian uh, Leslie. Okay, Ian Leslie's got a lot of experience. He pulls more in the right hand. I see he's got more experience in the right hand, but generally a guy is pretty well as tough in both hands as he is in one. It's just the experience factor that comes in. And Ian, he has pulled a lot left. He's a good he's a good left-handed arm wrestler. And once again, we see the strap being brought out. And perhaps you can explain a little bit. You know, when we start talking about the the, uh, the strap that's that's uh, that's needed 
in a championship of this of this caliber why we see so many slip outs and why there there is the need for this track okay well actually only recently maybe in the last couple of years you, you see so many slip outs because there's more guys going to what we call the top roll position or the over the top move guys that pull inside don't have the tendency to slip out so it's just that it's just the style has changed over the years Go. He didn't waste any time with the straps on. So that gives Ian Leslie. There's some points for Canada, and we're sure happy about that. <laughs> so the Canadians will take it. And that gives him the heavyweight for the left-handed uh, division to Ian Leslie. And it allows us to move on to the women's division, which is an interesting aspect in so much as that this is not just a man's sport. And some of the ladies that are involved in this are just as serious and just as dedicated as the men. Exactly. Leanne Barker. You're in the finals of the Women's Open here. You're supposed to be in the 135 pound class. What happened? I uh, missed my weight by about three pounds. I miscalculated and I started my dieting a little bit too late and I didn't make it in my class. Okay, I understand you in weight training for bodybuilding and did that have something to do with it? Yeah, I, I feel uh, probably because I was carrying a little bit more muscle. I couldn't get my weight down in time. Um, You're the champion here last year at Can-Am, 135 pound. Does it look good for repeating again in the Women's Open? You bet. I'm going to give her all I got. <laughs> Brenda Virgett, you're a housewife and a mother of two girls. What got you into arm wrestling? My husband did. And I see you're busy today doing draw sheets as well. Isn't that tough to get your concentration and arm wrestle as well? Yeah, it is. But when the women are coming up, I sit down, so I'll get ready for my class. Okay, you've held a fair number, number of titles, and you're going for another one today in the 135 pound class? Yes, I am. Well, we Jet wins that match quite easily. We have got two serious contenders here. Okay, we got Rebecca in the red on the white, and we've got Nora Hoffman on the left in the green t-shirt. <laughs> Take a look at that expression. Now Rebecca's coming out of the losing side, so if she wins, she'll ha she'll have another shot at Nora for the championship. Again, Nora, we Nora's in the advantage position, and it, and she's shown her strength and her true championship spirit by winning the match in quick fashion. She made that look awfully easy. <laughs> she sure did. So the winner of the Women's Open Division is Nora Huffman. Nora, this is for the most part a man's sport. Uh, how did you get into it? I uh, was working and I saw the first arm wrestling match to place where I worked and one of the gals that was uh, world champion dared me into it. So I couldn't turn down the challenge. This is a good opportunity for ladies to to maybe uh, show their stuff too? Yes. Yes, definitely it is. I think every woman should uh, have the chance to get out and see that she doesn't have to be housebound. I mean, she can be feminine, but she can get into a sport. It's not exclusively for men. It's a competition and a challenge. This is going to be an interesting matchup because we've got a fella here that we don't really know against the former champion. Stan Douglas is the defending champion. He won the title here last year at the seniors at the Can-Am. So it could go either way. Now, Albert Hupka a big surprise the fact that he would get here this far. It sure is to us, especially the championship like this. Albert's 49 years old. It's his first time arm wrestling. He comes in off the street. <laughs> I don't know what he does for a living, but you can see that he looks tough. He showed us in the semis and the quarters 
that he has tremendous endurance. But is he in over his head against Stan? No, I don't think so. He's proven to, in order to get to the finals, he, he's gone through some tough matches. He was in that, he was in a four minute match with Manuel earlier. So we know he's got endurance and he beat Manuel, who's a former world champion. So this is gonna be a good match. Nevertheless, Stan Douglas has to be considered the favorite going into this match. Because as you said before, he is a defending champion. Right, Albert's on the left of the, and uh, Stan are champions in the blue t-shirt on the right of the screen. This looks like it could be another long match. This is Albert, Albert Hupka's kind of match though. It is his kind of match. He's shown he can take it. But Stan took control. Maybe that four minute match did have a bearing in this final. And Stan retains his championship. And he remains the world senior champion. That's right. Congratulations to Stan. Now we move on to the left hand side of this competition and that is somewhat unique. That's unique in a Can-Am tournament because the Americans don't do very much arm wrestling left-handed. That's pretty well Canada's domain. And we've got a good one. A Canadian by the name of Jerry Baudray. Let's talk about him. Okay, Jerry Baudray, the shorter of the two on the left-hand side. He's actually a 135-pounder, but he's pulling in the 150-pound class. He's got seven Canadian titles. He's undefeated in Canada so far. Going against in the blue. In the blue. He's going against Robert Baselou from the, from the United States. Truly a, a Can-Am setup. It sure is. The advantage should go to Baselou. You would think because of the size, but Jerry Baudry, as you mentioned before, is a Canadian who has never lost in Canada. That's right. The advantage, realistically, the advantage goes to Baselou because he's a 150 pounder. But because of the titles that Jerry's had and the experience, he should be able to figure out a way to beat the American. Look at those boyish looks. Hard to believe that this, <laughs> this is somebody who is taking a sport this seriously, and he does take it seriously. He really takes it serious. He's 24 years old. He's been arm wrestling for a lot of years. He's already got one championship under his belt from today, and that was on the right side. Now he's trying to add to it on the left. That's right. He's undefeated both arms. They've got a slip out. And that was close. But they did call it a slip out. We're not sure if we're going to strap up on this match. And here's a good opportunity for us to talk about the importance that the officials play on the outcome of some of these matches. That's right, because the referee has the uh, discretion to call a foul on one of the competitors if he thinks they caused the slip out. And there's always controversy. It's just like the NHL playoffs. Always controversy. It doesn't matter who they call or what they call. The other guy wants them to call something different. Okay, they're just going for a restart. They're not going to strap up. And you can just feel that intensity. You can cut it with a knife. These guys aren't giving nothing to the other guy. They're, nobody's relaxed here. They're both tense. They're both pumped up. They're both tight. And they're both ready to go for the championship. We're going to strap them up now. Let us also point out that both of these two have lost a match. This being a double knockout. That's right. You, when you lose one match, you go down into the B side. You can still come through the whole tournament on the B side and end up in the final. And it was Baseball who came around from the back door to get into the final. That's right. He, he's coming out of the B side. So he had to beat, or he has to beat Jerry twice in order to win the championship. He's already done it once. That's right. The, the, winner, the, of this, the winner of this wins the championship. <laughs> okay. Now we've set the stage. There's the concentration on the face. And it takes concentration. If you haven't got all your mind on what you're doing, then you're not going to get the quick start. That's another important thing with the refs. They've got to be clear on the signal. Ready, go. If you're not listening, the other guy's going to blow you away. And just like NHL players or CFL players, they really do like to just have that, that consistent officiating, much more so than uh, the officials who may be hot and cold or up or down. That's right. You get used to a referee, too. We've had variations here because we've had Americans refereeing and Canadians. And a lot of times you'll find that somebody likes a specific ref because he is consistent. No! Straps up now. These guys won't slip out, so we're going to see a real tough match. Again, each is lost once, and this is it. 
there's the start, took that one. Robert Beastlug from the United States takes the championship. First time that Jerry Baudry has been defeated in Canada. And a very important win for the Americans when you start talking about overall points. Overall points because they've been close so far. Which is quite a difference in comparison to the same competition this time last year where the Canadians simply ran away with it. That's right. We expected the same thing this year, but the Americans surprised us. Now, this for the middleweight. Again, left-handers. Clyde Young against Greg, Greg Topa. Greg Topola, the Canadian on the left-hand side in the gray, against Clyde L Young, an American. Both real tough. They both met, met each other before. This is the final match for the championship. These guys are tough, just like the last match that we saw. Young again coming back through the back door. Had to beat uh, Topola once, did. And, that, and this has set up this final championship for the middleweight for the left-handers. And... Uh, he had a smile. Clyde, the fellow in the white t-shirt on the right, had a smile on his face when he beat Greg last time. I think he feels that he's got Greg's number. And we've seen throughout this competition the way that, that Clyde Young has been able to intimidate his opponents, has, has used a lot of facial expressions to get to the to break their concentration. How much of a factor will this be in a, in a championship bout? Will, will, uh, will Greg be affected by that kind of intimidation? He can be, but I've watched Greg arm wrestle a lot, and I don't think that he can be psyched out by an opponent. He doesn't even look at him. He's concentrating on what he's going to do. Here we go. We've got a good match. Yes, he's on top. They're both, they're both in the top roll position. Very much in control. Very much in control. He's throwing every ounce of his weight on, onto Clyde's hand. I'm surprised that he's hanging on. Oh, but you've got to give a lot of credit to this young man by the name of Clyde Young. He has come back and won it with determination and you can see the americans jerry nelson there to hug him this is this truly is a nationalistic sport where you see the americans hanging out together congratulating each other terrific terrific match that's fantastic and we're going to really have to look over the points now because those last two matches might have made it real close we'll be back with more of the 1987 can-am world senior championships right after this Wydell's Gym is proud to sponsor the 1987 Can-Am Open Arm Wrestling Championships. Wydell's Gym, your complete health and fitness center, offering a full complement of free weights, selectorized machines, sunbeds, showers, and more. For the serious weight trainer or just the fitness conscious, Wydell's is open seven days a week and boasts a fun and friendly co-ed atmosphere. Check out their selection of membership rates and suit your own budget. Wydell's Gym, located at 7...